This is how you can make an aluminium sprocket using a 3D printer and a router. I'll show you how to draw it at the end of the video. So I just printed these out on my little end of three, one red, one black. I first need to bolt the plastic to the metal. I mark out the holes and drill them. Using some M8 bolts I secure the plastic patterns. I need to get rid of the excess material. So I cut it out with a jigsaw and a hole saw. This probably wasn't necessary as the router cut so fast you could do the whole lot with just the router. So we've got this router sort of set up in the vise here. Borrowed this off my mate. I went and brought one of these bits. It's got a bearing on top. So I put that in there and let's see if this works. Plastic sprocket set up in here ready to rock and roll. I might do these holes first just to see if it works. Put my setup. Have to tape off the trigger and then just plug it in. Clamp it to the vise with the uh, sideways bar in there. So this is actually working pretty good. Problem is there's quite a lot of material to haul off. So I've changed the cutter to just a normal one that's a bit bigger. Just so I can wipe some of this off first and then I'll go back to the small cutter. So in WD-40 or Inox stops the cutter clogging up. It cuts through this 5mm plate quickly. Cutting the teeth of the sprocket like this takes a while, but it's actually quite fun. You develop a bit of a technique as you go and you get better and better at it. There's actually a vacuum cleaner attachment for this router. I wish I used it because it made such a mess. All right, I've been around and cut most of the teeth out. I just haven't cut the parts where they overlap. So I'll shift these around one set of bolt holes to get that in between part. So ready for the final cut here. Just got to cut around here. I'm using the, an original sprocket because to one continuous circle instead of these things. So let's try that. Good. What if it's going to work? So some 520 chain fits pretty well on there. It's quite tight, which is good. Nearly all the way around. There's a couple of teeth I didn't quite get properly, but it still goes all the way around. Now we need to strength test it. Also, I might put a bit of a bevel on these edges, maybe with just a grinder, so it feeds better. Okay, it seems to work fine. So let's do a strength test, see if I can break it, eh? Looks like it's pretty strong, right? How long is it gonna last? Let's answer a few questions before they get asked, eh? A friend of mine used to race Supermoto on an RMZ 450. He had heaps of different sprockets for different gearing options. Some of them are aluminium, some are steel. So these aluminium sprockets are made out of, I think, 6061 grade. The sprocket I made out of is 505 grade, I think. The biggest sprocket I could find was a 51 tooth. But I needed a 60 tooth to reduce my gearing, that's why I made my custom one. Okay, not a very scientific test, but you can definitely see the center punch went deeper into this than this. So my sprocket's not going to last as long as this one. 
I can always make another one if I buy some of that aluminium. But since the load's spread over 60 teeth, I think it'll have a fighting chance at lasting a while. All right, I'll show you how you can draw one yourself. So I just Googled the dimensions for 520 chain. That's what motocross bikes have. 525 chain, 530 and 532 are all the same, just different widths. Then you get the 15.88 pitch dimension times 60, that's how many teeth I'm using, divided by pi, which is the circumference, give you the diameter, divide that by two, that equals 151.67283. Set that, then your roll diameter, it's supposed to be 10.16, but I did it 10.5 because the printer's not 100% accurate, plus you want a little bit of clearance. Then I just times this by 60 in a circular pattern. That basically gives you your sprocket size. Then I drew draw a three-point circle in between those just to basically find the center line. It's probably a better way of doing it, but this is how I did it. You could probably use... a uh, profile like this and it would work fine but try and draw it a little bit better describe a line to the center to that and you have to extend it out and then I just kind of freehand drew the tooth profile is what I thought which worked out to be pretty good and you're just using that line as a mirror line then times that whole lot by 60 as well in a circular pattern finish sketch and extrude it out there you go, there's basically your sprocket. Then just mark out the other stuff like your center hole and your bolt pattern. That's how you draw a 60 tooth. Problem is if you're drawing something smaller, because I'm drawing the pitch on a curved radius, it's not a true dimension. What you could probably do is use like a polygon set in your 15.88. So put in your 15.88 for your pitch, choose the number of teeth you want, and then draw a circle on each point. That means you've got the correct distance. So another way to get a tooth profile is once you've drawn out your circles, uh, you can import a canvas, grab a picture and put it in and you can use this to copy your tooth profile. Cut it into three so it will fit on my printer. These are my print settings if you're interested. If I did this again, I'd probably make little tabs to align it together and print all three and glue them together so it's easier to cut out. You can do this to any 2D shape really. Thanks for watching guys, see you in the next